information will be given by Muhammad Abdulhamdan. He did his master's thesis with the title Design Implementation Common Grade Class B, RF Power of Department in Yamanita Timos at the RWTH Aachen University from Germany. He was an Erasmus Mundus student doing his master's thesis under the supervision of uh, Danish Kalin. And he had an, an examiner as well there before coming here, uh, Dr. Renato Negra. And of course, since he's a student at KTH, he should defend here, and I am his examiner here. He has two opponents as well, uh, exchange. Now Ying Song is uh, one of the opponents, and the second one is Bilal Shahzad. Okay, the floor is yours. Uh, not more than half an hour. Uh, hello and welcome to the master thesis presentation titled Designing Implementation of Common Grain Class We are Foreign Defined in 1990 CMOS Technology. Uh, these are the contents of this presentation. First of all, I will uh, discuss the motivation behind this work. After that, I will go uh, into a bit of the theory of uh, power amplifiers and uh, discuss why I, uh, why I have chosen this thesis and what's the major scope of this work. Then I will discuss the two designs uh, which I made. One is a single angle class B power amplifier in common range configuration, while the other being a single angle class B common source configuration power amplifiers. Uh, I will uh, compare their results in terms of different uh, performance parameters and uh, I will especially focus on the linearity issues uh, encountered in modern wireless power amplifiers. Then I will discuss different uh, versions of differential common drain class B power amplifiers as usual uh, because integrated power amplifiers are usually in differential configuration. So I will discuss different uh, load network architectures for differential version of uh, class B power amplifiers. After that, there will be conclusions, future work, and a question and answer session. <coughs> so, uh, here we, we can see a block diagram of a very simple transmitter. As you can see, power amplifier is a large building block just before an antenna. Uh, modern wireless applications demand power amplifiers that are not only efficient but also linear. Efficiency is important for longer battery life, while high linearity is important to avoid uh, spectral regrowth and the interference among closely spaced channels. Operating amplifier in class B configurations offers the potential uh, to provide high efficiency with substantial gain. And at the same time, if we use the power amplifier in common range configuration, due to its inherent neg negative feedback nature, we can get uh, additional linearity. The problem with common drain amplifier is that it has only current gain and it has substantial uh, stability issues. <coughs> so the scope of this work is to design and analyze a common drain class PTA for 2.55 gigahertz frequency range with UMC 90 nanometer. Uh, basically the power amplifiers are classified into two categories. First is the linear power amplifier and other being the switch mode power amplifiers. In linear power amplifier, the device is operated as a control current source, and in linear amplifier, we have problem with stability. Whereas in switch mode power amplifier, the device is operated as a switch, and these amplifiers are highly non-linear. And with harmonic tuning, we get uh, tremendous amount of efficiency in uh, 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 switch mode power amplifier at the cost of linearity. My work is focused on uh, class B amplifier, which is a subcategory of linear power amplifier. <coughs> so this is a very simple uh, 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 trade of pyramid of uh, the challenges we face in uh, uh, power amplifier design. There are many, but they can be summarized into three basic categories. First is the linearity, other being the efficiency, and the third being the gain. Efficiency directly corresponds to the battery life of a handheld device or in terms of base station power amplifier, it, it translates to the operational cost of the base station. Uh, in terms of linearity, linearity is important because uh, modern applications, the channel are so widely closed, and the linearity can severely, non-linearities can severely damage the, uh, the tough constraints imposed by the modern wireless standards. The gain for power amplifier is also very important. So if the amplifier doesn't have sufficient gain, then we might require uh, multiple amplifier stages which would uh, uh, increase the cost as well as uh, increase the chip area. So these are the three basic uh, uh, 
design clear those challenges we face in power amplifiers. <coughs> in power amplifiers, uh, usually we use a common source configuration as it ho offers a uh, large gain, both the current gain and voltage gain, but uh, this configuration is uh, substantially non-linear. Common drain configured power amplifiers have moderate gain and they are inherently linear. Very little research is being done on uh, power amplifiers in common drain configuration and my work is uh, one step in that direction. As far as linearity is concerned in switch mode power amplifier, we cannot have a linear switch mode power amplifier unless and until we uh, use advanced transmitter architectures like LINK, which uh, is somewhat very complicated, uh, that uses two switch mode amplifiers to get uh, uh, linear amplification with the help of a DSP engine. <coughs> okay, since my work is focused on class B amplifiers, I will uh, now discuss little about the linear power amplifiers. Uh, in linear power amplifiers, we have uh, these A, B, B and C classes. The class B has substantial amount of uh, harmonic content, but it is highly efficient as compared to uh, the linear version, which is class A. We also know that if you bias a device at just a threshold, we have a minimum uh, gate source capacitance. And the, it is this gate source capacitance that is a major cause of the intermodulation distortion. So the question arises, if we bias, uh, if we use a common drain amplifier in class B configuration, can we get a highly linear power amplifier? So my work was focused more or less on answering, uh, finding an answer to this question and designing different uh, a common drain class B configuration and analyzing their results and comparing them amongst each other. <coughs> this is the uh, journal design flow of a linear power amplifier. It starts with the design specification. After that, we have to determine the optimum impedance conditions. I will discuss this later what I mean by this thing. Then we must design the load transformation network, input matching, and the desired results and then we go back and forth unless we get the desired result and then do the layout and measurements. This is a very simple uh, block diagram of that amplifier. We have an active device, the output load transformation network, the input and stability network, and the output bias and input bias voltages. <coughs> now we'll specifically discuss the load network of class B amplifier and uh, how the class B operation works. In class B operation, we, as we know, we bias the device at threshold, and uh, since uh, there is a half of, there is no overlap between the current and voltage in the half cycle, so the efficiency is uh, enhanced in class B operation, and theoretically, we can get an efficiency of around 78 percent. The impedance condition, or Z opt, as I mentioned earlier, for class B operation is as follows: that at fundamental frequency, the device output must see an optimum impedance, known as R opt and at all other uh, harmonic frequencies it must see a short. The R op is determined either through load pull simulation or uh, through a DC load line of the device. <coughs> the load transformation network is uh, designed uh, for the optimum performance of uh, the power amplifier and usually it is retuned over and over again to get the desired amount of uh, power and efficiency for the amplifier. The input matching network is designed for the maximum power transfer from the source to the load. Whereas the stability network is a lossy network in linear amplifiers to make the amplifier unilateral in order to avoid oscillations between the input and output terminals. <coughs> this is a schematic of, in which I have only shown the load transformation network and only my amplifier without the uh, stability and input matching network. The load transformation network consists of two parts. One is the harmonic tank and other is the impedance transformation network at fundamental frequency. The harmonic tank is an LC tank operate, operating at fundamental and it shortens all the uh, higher harmonics to ground, whereas the impedance transformation network transforms my R op, the optimum resistance which I have determined for the amplifier to 50 ohms. So th these two networks form my complete low transformation network of the amplifier. Uh, one thing is worth mentioning, the higher the quality factor of my tank, the better is the harmonic suppression and vice versa. <coughs> Uh, here I have shown the response of the whole load transformation network in the Smith chart. Here we can see that at my fundamental frequency I get the desired R op, which in my case was around 5.1 ohms, and at all other harmonic frequency I see a short. And this can be seen here that at fundamental I see approximately 5.08 ohms, and the other harmonics being the short. <coughs> 